My name is Paul Shpakov, and in this video series, I'll be fixing up my 97 RAV4 to make it as awesome as possible. This video is a tutorial on tuning up the RAV4. And before I forget, let's just grab that mileage off the odometer. Spark plugs and wires can last up to 100,000 miles, but auto parts stores will tell you to replace them much more often than that. How old do you think these wires are? Here's a clue. New wires don't say 1996 on them. The distributor cap and rotor and spark plugs should be replaced every 30,000 miles. I'll need a 16 millimeter socket and a magnet for the plugs and the distributor needs an eight millimeter socket and a small Phillips bit that works with the ratchet. I'll start by unplugging the intake air temperature sensor and pulling off stuff that's attached to the air box. The air box hose clamp takes a 10 millimeter socket. I'll pull out the air filter too. Next, pull the spark plug wires off the plugs but leave them connected to the distributor. Use an 8mm socket and a 3 inch extension to remove the two distributor cap bolts. Pull the ignition wire off the coil and take the cap and wires out of the car. Here I'm using the Phillips bit to take out the distributor rotor bolts. Remember which way the rotor is pointing. The electrode is to the back of the car now. Use the 16mm socket and a 6 inch extension to unscrew the spark plugs. I'm using a magnet to pull the plugs out of the holes. You can use a spark plug socket instead, but personally, I don't like them. Old spark plugs will have carbon buildup on the electrode and should be a tan or beige color. If it's too white or black, your engine has problems and you need to check it out. This spark plug actually looks pretty good. I'm applying anti-seize to the spark plug threads so they don't get stuck later. I skipped the spark plug gap part because the fancy iridium plugs come pre-gapped. I'm setting the plugs into the holes very gently, then threading them in by hand. After they're completely threaded in, you can tighten them with the ratchet. The distributor rotor will get carbon buildup from normal use. If there's too much, it can cause the engine to misfire. The distributor has a groove and the rotor has a notch to help you install it in the proper position. I would say it's idiot proof, but never underestimate idiots. They'll find a way to install it wrong. My distributor cap is also nice and burned up. It's not bad enough to cause problems yet, but my gas mileage could be a little lower. It's definitely time for a new cap. Next, I'll put the magic white goo all over the new distributor cap and ignition wire set. The dielectric helps keep water out and prevents wires from getting stuck on later. Basically, I'm just going through and matching up the new parts to make them look like the old. I'll start with the shortest wire and move up to the longest wire. Now the distributor cap can go back in the car. Make sure it's seated properly and reinstall the two bolts. The spark plug boots also get the goo, then just put them in over the plugs. Make sure each wire snaps into place. I'll reconnect the coil and put a new air filter in my car. It's time for the air box to go back in. Remember to connect all the little hoses and the intake air temp sensor. And the moment of truth. Does my engine still run or am I a hack? Okay, it works. That means all the wires are in the right place and I didn't screw it up. The fuel filter should be replaced every 30,000 miles, but nobody does that and it usually works just fine much longer than that. I'll need 14 and 17 millimeter wrenches for the fuel lines and rust penetrating spray is definitely a good idea for my old car. I already have the airbox and filter off. The coolant overflow tank needs to come off as well as the lower airbox. Use the 10 millimeter socket and a 6 inch extension to get the three bolts out. Unplug the connector and hoses from the canister purge solenoid and the box is ready to come out. Before I work on the filter I want to release any extra pressure from the gas tank by taking the gas cap off and putting it back on. This will prevent too much gas from coming out of the fuel lines when I disconnect them. The fuel filter is located behind the airbox and under the fuse and relay box. Use the 17 millimeter wrench to break the banjo bolt loose on top of the filter. Remove the fuel line and make sure to get both washers off. Use a 14 millimeter wrench to unscrew the lower fuel line from the filter. This will be tight the whole way out and not very much fun. Use a shallow 8 millimeter socket to take out the bracket bolt. Once the bolt is out, you can bend the bracket back and pull out the filter. Replace that bolt with a longer one. It's much easier to start than the stupid short one. The fuel line notch on top of the filter should point to the front of the car. The lower fuel line is a flared compressor fitting. The threads don't need tape or sealant, but the fitting needs to be very tight. The new fuel filter comes with two new washers. Install them above and below the banjo fitting on the upper fuel line. This one should also be very tight. Reinstall the air box, overflow reservoir, and air filter. Don't forget to plug in all the hoses, purge solenoid, and intake air temp sensor. Start the engine and check the fuel filter for leaks. Use a flashlight and look at it from above by the brake fluid reservoir. The valve cover gasket is one of those things that always leaks in an older car. Fortunately, it's easy to replace. It's a good idea to replace it with the tune-up because the spark plug tube seals can leak oil and damage your new spark plugs and wires. You'll need 10 and 30 millimeter sockets and a 12 millimeter wrench. The 30 millimeter socket also fits the axle shafts. Start by disconnecting the throttle cable and removing the bracket. I'm using a flathead screwdriver to pry the spark plug wires up. Don't pull on the wires because you can break them. Leave the spark plug wires connected to the distributor and just set them away from the valve cover. Pull off the 
crankcase vent hoses, then pull the power steering reservoir up and set it aside. Remove the four bolts from the upper timing cover with a shallow 10 millimeter socket. The back two bolts are crammed up against the body, so they're pretty annoying. This is a good time to inspect the timing belt. I didn't remove the timing cover, I just moved it over a bit. Pull the wiring harness straight up and set it on top of the timing cover. This takes a lot of effort. Basically, I just need a little bit of room so the valve cover can come out. Remove the four spark plug tube nuts with a 30 millimeter socket. Use the flathead screwdriver to pry out the spark plug tube seals. Then the valve cover is ready to come out. Use a razor blade to clean up the sealing surface on the engine. Make sure to clean up all the oil and get the bits of silicone out of the corners by the camshaft. Remove the old valve cover seal and clean the valve cover. I'm using a little bit of silicone to keep the seal from falling out when I install it. Pry out the old PCV valve and push a new one into place. Apply silicone sealer to the corners by the camshaft to make sure you don't get any leaks, then install the valve cover. This isn't required, but I like to put silicone all over the spark plug tube seals too. Install the nuts, tighten them a little bit, then go back and torque to 33 foot-pounds. That's pretty tight, but not Hulk tight in case you don't have a torque wrench. Make sure the spark plug wires snap into place and reinstall the throttle cable. Don't forget the hoses and remember to reinstall the four timing cover bolts. And that's it. The valve cover gasket is done. Adjusting the ignition timing is part of the tune-up on some cars. Here I have a timing light, 12 millimeter wrench, and a short piece of wire. The timing light connects to the battery for power and the signal comes from the number one spark plug wire. The computer on the RAV4 constantly adjusts ignition timing, so we must tell it to stop doing that so we can set the base timing. Open the diagnostic connector above the alternator and connect the jumper wire between the TE1 and E1 terminals. Start the engine and point the timing light at the harmonic balancer pulley just below the alternator and behind the AC compressor. The small groove in the pulley should line up with the 10 degree mark on the timing cover. Looks like mine is perfect. To adjust the timing, loosen the 12 millimeter bolt on the front of the distributor and twist it just a little bit. My distributor is actually not adjustable. Some distributors will have a slot instead of a round hole and will have some adjustment. Once you get the timing to 10 degrees, tighten the distributor clamp bolt. Turn off the engine and remove the jumper wire. And that's it. Timing is done. And that is what the word tune-up means. If you like this video, please share it and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time.